All right. Let's see, we got it. Okay. So we look at the mechanism of translation or protein synthesis. All right. First of all, of course, the process of translation involves a ribosome. That's our protein synthesis machinery binding to a messenger RNA, not to other kinds of RNAs. That would cause them all kinds of nasty problems. And then using, effectively reading the language of nucleotide sequences. And then using that information to join amino acids together in a specific order to make a protein or a peptide. And that's why they call it translation, because in effect you're translating one language, a language of nucleotide sequences, of base sequences, and into another language, a language of amino acid sequences. So they call that process translation, as opposed to transcription. Okay, well, so we're going to take a look at it, but before we look at translation, once again, we have to take a look at a generic messenger RNA, because there are sequences in that messenger RNA that are important for regulating translation. In fact, a few sequences are critical for translation to occur, and they have nothing to do with the code the, of what we call codons that are going to actually be read by the ribosome. Now, most of you folks probably recall at least a little bit of this kind of stuff from genetics, but we're going to review it again and then take a look at how it's regular. So let's take a look at typical messenger RNA. Okay, of course we have a single coding sequence. We've gotten rid of the introns and spliced the exons, at least some of the exons together a long, long time ago. So we have a coding sequence and we're represented as a large box here. At the very beginning we have a three base sequence, it's A U G, and that's what we call the initiation codon. In effect, it's like a capital letter at the beginning of a sentence that says, This is where the protein starts. Now, at the very end, we are going to have one of three stop codons, like the period at the end of a sentence. And we'll describe just in case what a codon is. And that, I think, is. Uh, Whoa, U-G-A, correct me if I'm wrong on this, U-A-A, and is it U-A-C is the last one? No, U-A-G. Oh, crap, okay. So I forgot my chemistry a long time ago. Okay, so these are the three stop codons. Each one of those, any one of those three says to the ribosome, don't add any more amino acids, you're done. Okay, well that's what we got here, but we also have additional sequences in the messenger RNA that are ultimately important for translation and its regulation. We have a short space, a few to a few tens of nucleotides, that's sometimes called the 5' prime untranslated, meaning ribosome's not reading that region, and they often call it UTR, 5' prime UTR. All right. Okay, and then we have at the very beginning our 5' prime cap, 7 methyl guanosine. And it's kind of the opposite orientation of the other nucleotides, it's kind of inverted. That cap is absolutely essential, we'll see why a little bit later, but that cap is absolutely essential for ribosome binding and recognition. If you don't have that cap, the ribosome doesn't even know you're there. So it's absolutely essential, and it plays a role in transport out of the nucleus too. Although you don't necessarily need the full cap, a partial cap will do. If you don't have any cap at all, it's stuck in the nucleus, can't get out. Okay, now, continuing down here, we have a long stretch of mucerpin. And in higher eukaryotes, like chordates, you're talking 200, 300 or so nucleotides long. That's also untranslated. And that's our 3' prime untranslated region. And as we're going to see, that binds all kinds of regulatory proteins. These regulatory proteins can help out promote or inhibit translation. That's one thing they can do. They can somehow help protect that messenger RNA from attack by nucleases. The cytoplasm is a dangerous place 
if you happen to be an RNA molecule. It's full of nucleases. It's like walking around. It's like people going to Afghanistan. It's a dangerous neighborhood, right? There's all kinds of things that want to kill you. Okay, same thing in the cytoplasm. There's nucleases all around that can destroy these RNA. Somehow proteins binding to this can inhibit those and protect the RNA from degradation. So that controls lifespan. And thirdly, we can have proteins that will associate this to the cytoskeleton. So we can move a messenger RNA around to a specific part of the cell, or we can hold it in a particular part of the cell, keep away from the ribosomes, whatever the case is. So we bind all kinds of regulatory proteins to that. And finally, and this is generally about two or three hundred nucleotides long, we have our poly A tail. The poly A tail also binds proteins. Some of these proteins are going to be involved in things like, once again, nuclease protection, however they, however they work. In other words, affecting the messenger RNA lifespan. Other proteins are going to be either promoters or inhibitors of translation. So, we have all these things. Now, there's an evolutionary trend as you go from lower eukaryotes to higher eukaryotes. Ah, question, Claudia. Oh, that's not what page you're on. What? Page? Oh, what okay. Page I think it's, uh, we could start about at 89 is the one I got here. Okay, yeah. I do have a question. Okay. So, last lesson, you uh, took down the point. Mm -hmm. What do each of the points correspond to? Do they correspond to the 3', three prime UTR or to the poly A tail? Oh, the ones I just said today? Oh, no, last lesson. Oh, last time. It was both. I thought I'd kind of map that out. Okay. Um, there was a lot of overlap between proteins that bind the poly A tail and the untranslated region, especially in terms of regulating lifespan. Both play a role. Okay. Um, the poly A tail is probably more involved than the three than the, untra the three prime untranslated region in promoting or inhibiting translation. Although I, I, both can happen, but I think it's the poly A tail that plays a bigger role in that. Okay, so those so there's partial but not complete overlap in what binds these sequences. Okay. Okay, that help? Yeah. All right. Now once again, an evolutionary trend, you go from lower to higher eukaryotes, you start seeing an increase, especially in the untranslated region length. You go like really low, simple multicellular eukaryotes. That's often, you know, 50 or 100 nucleotides long. And us, it might be like 300 nucleotides long. Gives us additional opportunities to regulate translation by binding different kinds of proteins to it. All right, so that's our key sequences that are involved in translation. And it's regulation. It's actually good stuff. Short one.